So let's actually start the dynamics unit and not just do kind of leftovers. Uh, so what do I mean when I say dynamics? Well, we're still talking about things that are moving, but now with um, respect to the forces that are moving them. What the heck is a force? It's any sort of push or pull, right? It's an action that's capable of accelerating an object. If an object is accelerating, it is experiencing a force, okay? So as force is so tightly um, defined by acceleration, and acceleration is a vector, force is also a vector, right? The direction we push or pull something definitely has a lot of uh, an effect, right? And it's very important. So definitely we need to keep direction in check there when we're talking about force. Uh, and this is, of course, measured in newtons. We did do the unit breakdown for that. Remember, newtons is me um, kilograms times meters per second squared. Why is that? Well, because it's um, mass times acceleration, right? There's mass, there's your acceleration. But they just said that's too messy, so we are just going to call that something new, and we're going to call it newtons, okay? So speaking of Newton, he came up with a bunch of laws of motion that we still use today because they have turned themselves into laws. They are uh, fact at this point. So the first law is often called the law of inertia. Now, what the heck is an inertia? It's the tendency of a body to maintain its current state of motion, right? So then we're going to keep doing something unless there's something else outside of it that causes it not to. And that's Newton's first law of motion. You've probably heard something like it. An object uh, in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Or an object at rest will remain at rest unless uh, acted upon by an outside force. I have slightly better language that we're going to use, but that is basically what the first law of motion is. The language I want to use is an object will remain at a constant velocity, because then that also includes the velocity of zero. Uh, in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, right? Because if you have two outside forces, but they're equal and opposite, then nothing's going to happen. So unbalanced force is actually what I want to call it. And so that is the law of inertia. So there is Newton's first law. Okay, yes, you do need to uh, memorize these laws. So again, an unbalanced force is where net force is zero, okay? And a balanced force is net force is equal to zero. So that could mean no force, but it also could mean there's two forces that are equal but pushing in opposite directions, then that is still a net force of zero. So remember, net force is always the vector sum of all the forces at work, okay? So Newton's second law of motion, let's get into that. And th what that is, a lot of people think that it should have a fancy saying. It doesn't. His second law of motion is just an equation that we use, that you've used in Science 10. And that is that acceleration is equal to the sum of all the forces divided by the mass. Or, again, a lot of people then rearrange this to be, be that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay? What's really, really important for you to know is that this is actually net force, what net force is, is the sum of all forces. Okay, but just remember A is acceleration. Of course, we know that we've been dealing with it a lot. So F, capital F is force. Make sure you're not changing the cases of any of these, okay? We need a lowercase m for mass. We need an upper case F for force. And we need a lowercase a for acceleration, okay? So when we, we look at this equation, right, so we know it more. Instead of the A is equal to, to net force over mass, we see it like this far more often. So keep in mind when you have force at um, different angles and stuff like that, we still need to be able to break that into its X and Y components. And theoretically, we could have to bring, break it into a Z component, which would be our third dimension, but don't worry, we're not going to do that, okay? So uh, mass is not a vector, so we'll never have to do that. Mass is just mass. But if I want f force in the x component, right, with the easts and the wests, then I need to have my acceleration in the x 
direction. If I want force in the y direction, I need my acceleration in the y direction, okay? So remember, those vectors kind of need to line up and be in the same direction. So let's do an example. So I want to know what average force is required to stop a 1100 kilogram car in eight seconds if it's traveling 90 kilometers per hour. Okay, so I know that net force, or the sum of all the forces, is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so what I want to know is the average force. I want to know this net force, what force is needed. So, mass times acceleration, great, we can do that. Wait, I don't have acceleration. But look at that, I have time, and I have a velocity, and I want to stop the car, so it kind of sounds like I have a final velocity as well. Oh my goodness, so are you telling me I can find acceleration? Kind of seems like we can, especially when we love use this lovely handy-dandy equation right there, because we're trying to bring it to a stop. So my final velocity is what? Zero. So nice. My initial velocity is 90 kilometers per hour. Oh, I do not want kilometers per hour. I need meters per second. So over here on the side, I can just kind of do a little switcheroony here. So I'm just going to use my factor label method. And I'm going to run out of room is what I'm going to do. Oh, just made it. So I'm going to take 90, multiply by 1,000, divide by 3,600, and I get 25 meters per second. Oh, doesn't that work out nicely? Okay, so there we go. So my acceleration is actually equal to negative initial velocity divided by time. So I can, I'm just going to substitute that in for my acceleration. You can calculate that first and then go for the final answer, MA, but I'm just going to do this. So mass times negative velocity velocity over time okay I'm gonna do that all in one step so that was 1100 kilograms okay times negative not 90 oops 25 meters per second all divided by 8.0 seconds if you're going why are you dividing everything well if I multiply the m by this and it really just multiplies by the numerator Okay, and what do I get? Well, I need, first of all, how many significant digits do I need? I have four there, I have two there, I have two there. Um, so I actually need two here. So if I need two, then this will actually uh, need to be put into scientific notation. So I should get negative 3.4 times 10 to the three newtons. Well, I guess it's time to go home now. Uh, anyways, there is your net force. And that's the force that is required to stop that car traveling 90 kilometers per hour in eight seconds. So that's a lot of force. So keep in mind, if you're tra traveling 90 kilometers per hour, give yourself more than eight seconds to stop, maybe, because that's a lot of force. Okay, you guys, good luck with that.